Y'all to filter back in. Uh, come on back into the space so we can continue the conversation because I wanted to jump in with, um, I wanted to jump in with, uh, the, the thing that I was going to talk about as far as Lex, Lex Newman and Tahoe with the porn, right? Um, when I was about 16, at this point I had already come out to my mother. Um, Tahoe said he gonna join, but I'm still gonna tell my story, Tahoe, so you gotta wait. <laughs> um... But what's up, T? It's popping. So I'm gonna tell my story, so you gotta wait. But <laughs> give me a second. So when I was like 16, I had already come out to my mom, and I remember one day we were coming home from church. Mind you, we went through the whole church service. We woke up that morning, went to church, came back, everything, and I didn't know anything was wrong. When we get home from church, my mom told my stepdad she was like, "Take them to the store." My brother and my sisters. So I'm looking crazy because I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to go to the store. And she was like, no, not you. So I was like, what the fuck did I do? Like, I was sitting next to you the whole time we was in church. So I, I know I couldn't have done anything wrong. And when everybody leaves the house, my mom pulls out this DVD. My, de my stepdad used to have porn DVDs in the closet. And I had found one. I was watching it, and I forgot to put it back in their room, and she found it. <laughs> so... The funny shit about this, and right now it's funny, but in the moment I was just like, what the fuck? So my mama pulls out this porn DVD, and the porn, the name of the porn DVD was called Big Booty Bitches. I'll never forget this shit because I was in trouble. It was called bitches. Big Booty Bitches, like 72, okay? And so me yeah, having 72. already come out to my mom, I, I came out to my mom. I was like, you know, I'm gay. So at this point, my mom is like, okay, you're gay, right? And my mom was 38 hot. Because she was like, if you're gay, why are you watching Big Booty Bitches 72? Now, I knew what she was getting at. I knew what she was trying to say. Because my mom was pissed off because she was still coping with the idea that I was gay. And she knew that I wasn't watching that porn for the Big Booty Bitches. Not one through 72 of them. She knew that I was watching the porn for I'm the men I'm that were like Big booty bitches. Let me make sure I type that in there. Fucking my Big five, booty so. bitches, 72. <laughs> <laughs> it was some good shit. It was good content. I'm just saying. It was, it was really good content. Just for, All right. for the FYI. But my wanna... thing is, but that goes back to Lex's comment about the idea that when niggas is watching porn, it's a bunch of dicks on the screen. So to say that, I mean, yeah, so I could relate to, I could relate to that, but okay. like me, I can't. If a if a nigga shit ain't the same, like mine or something, I don't even want to watch it. I want to. I'm thinking about me when I'm watching that. When I'm watching porn, I'm thinking about me fucking them bitches. When I was in prison and I was busting, when I was getting off to magazines and shit like that, I said I fucked them chicks because in my mind I was in that porn, I was in that magazine. I'm fucking her. I'm not thinking about that nigga. It could be a million different niggas. As long as he busting her ass the way I want to bust her ass, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm watching porn. It don't have nothing to do with that nigga. I'm not like, oh, yeah, dude. No. Yeah, she getting it. Yeah, bitch, jump on that shit. Look at her ass shape. That's what me, I'm thinking about. You understand what I'm saying? So the dicks, it could be seven, eight dicks on a chick. I don't give a fuck how many dicks in the room. I just want to see that she taking all that shit. She getting her ass bust. So you understand what I'm saying? You can't really, every, but you also got to realize that everybody is different. Every single body walking this planet, mind things differently, and it's attributed to how they was grown, how they was raised, their environment, their sexuality, how they view themselves. You can't generalize all people and say, this is how y'all do. Because then if I was to do that to trans women, if I was to do that to gay women, if I was to do that to dark-skinned women, if I was to do that to anybody, I'd be wrong. Because we're all different. We're all individuals. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I get homophobia. I get what you mean when you talk about homophobia because it is something that was taught to us. It was regulated. It was a regular thing to think that way. It was promoted. Yeah, as long, you're one of us as long as you're not one of them. Right. So I, to I totally get that. But in the essence of what I said, when I said, okay, we started this conversation talking about with men, where cis hetero men date trans women. Right. If it wasn't ever frowned upon, if they weren't ever taught that. Right. How could we ever possibly answer that question? 
How could I possibly ever answer that? Cause you telling me I can't be honest, but how could I possibly ever answer that question? My thing is when you fr when you phrase it like that, right? I think that it's one of those things where now when you say it like, how could I possibly answer that question? It is one of those because it's like, how do I go back and unlearn and unteach myself all of these things that have been reinforced in me throughout my entire life, especially the older that I get. But it's one of the. But see, I that's the thing is like you asking me to reprogram. Like, I don't have a problem that, that I like women. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem saying, yo, I'm, I could be cool with a trans woman. I could be, we could go out, we could go out, hang out, we could do whatever. But that's just not my thing. I don't have a problem with that because I'm not judging her on her lifestyle. I'm not hiding her from being in my life. I, I, I don't have no problem with that. But I personally, that's not my thing. And, and, and then when you want to go deeper and say, yo, why? Then you open in the door for me to say something where you, as a sensitive human being, not trans, just like you said earlier, anytime a person is rejected, they attribute that to something and they feel the way. When you're going to say, oh, well, why? That's rooted in homophobia. You're asking me to defend it with something that you're obviously going to get offended by. I don't know. I'm not trying to offend nobody. But I when think I that, that I'm just not attracted to that. But I think that it's exactly like one of the comments just said. I think the reason why it's a little different because it, it's like that. It's like the analogy that I made. It hits different because of where it seeps from, right? It's not necessarily the fact that you have the preference. It hits different because of where it seeps from. So it's just like when black people are attracted to somebody of white, Asian, whatever, and you know that the only reason that they're saying no is because you're black. And you know that that is seeped in racism, right? And so I think that when a trans woman knows or feels or has been given the impression that she got everything else that you need, and the only reason why you're saying no is because of the stigma that comes behind her being trans, that's when it hits different. That's when you be like, this is some bull. Because I feel like for me, especially when it comes, I think men are judged so much harder because men have a lot of ego that y'all like y'all do a lot of fuck shit talking i'm a real nigga i don't give a fuck about what nobody thinks mm -hmm. about me i'm a, i take care of mine you da, 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 da. and then it seems like every time you turn around men are letting what other people think dictate their lives like and i said course. absolutely there are I men who are ceos niggas who are ceos and cfos letting niggas who work at mcdonald's mm -hmm. make them feel like less than because of who they like to date what they like absolutely. to do in the bedroom Absolutely. I, I I'm never going to argue with that. Absolutely. I think that's just men's thing, period. You know, right. it's a, it, it's something that I don't even know if it's somebody said, especially black men. I mean, we, we, are, we are dick uh, comparers who got the bigger dick in the room. Hmm. And that's with money. That's with cars. That's with height. You know what I mean? Men, that's just how we do. So we always thinking about what's going to make us smaller, what's going to make people disrespect us or not like us. I don't know what it is with, with us that do that, but it's always a competition. You, and that's in, and I almost would say that's almost in any male species. You can't put two male lions in the same herd. They're not going for it. Then that have nothing to do with the way they think. Don't come around me, dude. This is my herd. You come over here, I'm, I'm ripping you to fucking shreds. Right. Penguins. You can't, don't put two male penguins fucking the same chick. They go you know what I mean? That's just how males are, and we are animals. At the end of the day, we just got other ways to communicate with it, and some of it is fucked up to other people. It's just it, that's just the way it is. I get it. So my so my initial um, basis was, how do we feel about it? Because um, what it, and the the funny and I think I need to give y'all some context around this shit too, because it was um this guy who. I shot my shot at, and he was he was very kind and like he was not rude in any way, shape, or form. But the backstory behind the backstory is that the guy that I shot my shot at was bisexual. So here's a man who likes men and women, but when I shot my shot, his response wasn't "You're not my type." It was "I'm not attracted to trans women." I need to understand. I need to understand something. From the LGBT community's perspective, why are trans people separated from the rest of the LGBT community? Like, why do y'all have a stigma? I don't understand it, me personally. So, 
in my opinion, and this is my opinion because my thing is there's a bunch of different opinions depending on who you talk to in the community. I am not the end all, know all being dictionary for trans folks everywhere. In my opinion, I feel like it's because there are a lot of LGBT folks who are fighting to fit in with heterosexual people. So when you look at a lot of gay men, they're trying their hardest to fit in with straight, black, toxic as fuck, masculine culture because they don't want to appear to be gay on the outside. They want the effects of having that gay relationship that they can enjoy, but they don't want the effects of being picked on or taunted or people knowing outwardly. Oh, you talking about people in the closet? Not the closet. Not, no, not people in the closet. There are out gay men who go out of their way to be overly masculine and exert masculinity for the sake of being favored with the straight what is, guy. What is masculinity to you? What is, it, what is exerting masculinity? It's not masculinity? to me. It's not what it is to me. It's what it is. No, but it's like, what's your definition? So when we're talking about the type of masculinity that I think a lot of gay men feel like they have to exude, it's the idea of looking like you're straight until somebody knows that you're not. So it's doing all of the things that straight men do. It's not owning the stereotypes that gay men have. It's not going to the places that gay men frequent. It's about being able to have straight male friends who don't mind hooping it up with you, who wouldn't think twice about going to the locker room with you. It's about being, a, it's about being one of the boys and, not, and having you being gay not being a problem for them right but inherently that's a problem for your community because then you bring that same toxic male shit back into the same community that you're trying to fuck on which doesn't make sense and it's the same thing for a lot of lesbian women their goal is to if they're butch women their goal is to make sure that the niggas fuck with them and if they're lipstick lesbians, which is what I still, it's an old term. I'm not sure if people still use that. But if they're lipstick lesbians, then their goal lesbians. is to be as prissy as the girls and, you know, still fit in with the girls without people thinking that they're trying to fuck them all the time. And that, to me, is a problem for they trans people though. because trans people are seen as the bottom of the bottom of the totem pole because we go against all of those things. Because you're a man who's trying to be a woman and you're a woman who's trying to be a man and that's just not the way it is and you fucking up the diaspora now we can't fit in for real because now straight people are going to say that we crazy as fuck we got them trans people over there doing all this crazy shit y'all fucking it up for us because there are some people in the lgbt community who like how like how some trans people just want to pass they just want to make it through and be seen as whatever they're transitioning to there are some gay people who just want to pass as straight until you know their business let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. and, and this is all coming from a place that I ain't done no studies on. I'm not, like I said, I'm super new to this room, right? Mm -hmm. To this combo. So this is just things that go through my mind and haven't read no books on it. I haven't had several conversations. So don't get mad. Not, right. not you. I don't think you will. But this, how much acceptance is, that, is necessary or and then how much judgment is necessary because it seems like every person is looking for acceptance from somebody else and then if not they're judging them for not accepting like why does it matter so much um to gay people what trans people do or or what or what the lipstick lesbians do or what the studs do or what heterosexuals do like what why does it matter so much i mean as long as it's not rooted in homophobia to the point where you're downing them why people can't just live their life because that stuff inherently kills people. That's what you don't understand. If not fitting in with heterosexual normality makes you a target for violence, it inherently makes you a target for violence. If you're not one of the gay boys who can hang with the niggas, then you're one of the gay boys who's going to get your ass whooped. If you're not one of the lesbians who can blend in with the dudes, then you're one of the lesbians that they're going to jones on. They might not fuck you up because you're still a woman to them, but they're definitely going to jones on you. If you're not one of the lipstick, the lipstick lesbians that other women can trust, then you don't have any friends. And it, it's one of those things where those things isolate you. If you cannot assimilate with heteronormativity and what heterosexual people are doing, if you don't blend in with heterosexual people, if you don't make heterosexual people comfortable, then something about you is going to be compromised and jeopardized. And for trans people, if you're not passing, you are in jeopardy 
of the highest level of those things. You're in jeopardy of being, especially if you're a trans woman and you black, you're in jeopardy of being killed if you don't pass. You're in jeopardy of being killed if you go, go down the wrong street. You're in jeopardy of being killed if the wrong nigga finds you attractive and that ain't got nothing to do with you. You're in jeopardy of being killed for all of these different things. You can't even get a job in 28 states if an employer says, nah, I don't fuck with that shit. And so if you don't pass, if you don't make cis people comfortable, if you don't make heterosexual people comfortable, then in some cases, you don't you don't survive out here in these streets. And that's just what it, a lot a lot of cis people don't know that because a lot of cis people when I tell them like literally I could be fired from my job if my employer is like, Oh, you trans, word, bye. Like that's the whole thing. I can be kicked out of like if my landlord sees this video and they didn't know that I was trans, they could be like, oh, hope you're trans. Well, we're devout Christians and we can't have that in my home. And so even though I paid my rent up until February, they can keep my rent and put me out because that is the, that's the law here in DC. They can put me the fuck out. And that's the law in Virginia. And that's also the law in Maryland. So my thing, that means I would have to move from the DMV to avoid this ever happening. But my thing is that's 28, that's a little over half of the states in America that I cannot live in because that's a possibility. That, that, that is a possibility of it happening. So a lot of LGBT folk who are not transgender don't want to go through that shit. So they do their best to be friends with, with the straight boys, fit in with the straight boys, make sure that the straight boys like them and got their back. You have to be one of the cool faggots. You have to be one of the cool butch queens. You have to be one of the cool lesbian girls. And trans people are never the cool ones. Even when you are bad, you could be the baddest trans bitch walking. Nobody can know your business unless you tell them your business. And you're still going to be up for grabs because if anybody ever found out that he has too much compassion, his masculinity is in jeopardy, which means your life is in jeopardy. Have you ever had this conversation with a gay man that has a problem with trans people? A, a bunch of them. Like on in public, like podcasting. I know you're coming out with your podcast soon. What's the name of your podcast that you're coming out with? Can We Talk. Can We Talk. That's a fly ass talk. name. That's a fly name. That's good. Yeah. Have you, you, you got it a plan for one of those? Huh? It was actually oh, it was sparked by you. Uh, it was inspired me. by you. Look at me. I'm going to need 10%. So I, this is, I'm recording this, so I'm going to need 10%. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's one of those conversations that that probably should be had because it should be some some level of um brotherhood or sisterhood or you know between the lgbt community because y'all breaking each other up up from the inside how the fuck am i supposed to know what to think when you get one story from this person who's defending it another story from this person that every time they talking about their struggle they're putting down the other people's struggle in the same shit how, well, I, i'm a nigga motherfucker that don't know nothing Right. So now I'm being fed all of these different stories. How the hell am I supposed to know what's going on? Right. But I mean, that go that attributes to the idea that people are still people. And a lot of folks don't understand. Like, I even had to tell my mom, like, when my mom was sitting back and saying, like, what you mean the gay boys don't like you? Yes, sis. Like, it's not all peaches and gray because we are part of the LGBT rainbow community. The boys don't. There are a lot of gay men who feel the same way that heterosexual men feel about trans women. They say that we're not women. They say that we need to stop that shit. There was one guy um, last year, and when I say he was a flaming queen, a flaming, tongue-popping, J-setting, le leotard-wearing queen who got on his Facebook Live and dogged trans women for an hour and a half with viewers. And I'm talking about thug niggas that I knew would never talk to this man in public, but because he was dogging trans women, they were here for it. Mm -hmm. And that got him clout. That got him an end with the, with the straight niggas. And then all of a sudden, he stopped wearing leotards. He, after that video, now that you have a couple of straight male followers who are saying, yeah, man, you right. Like, you one of the cool, you one of those cool gays. I could fuck with you. Now he changes his whole persona because now he's safe. I want to ask another question. This whole start, this whole conversation started. I just thought about it. Mm -hmm. Right. What you're talking about, a, a, a man, a cis hetero man who did, mm -hmm. who said once he was told that you were trans, mm -hmm. that he wasn't interested. He right. said, I'm not interested in trans. Right? right. How do you know 
what is the conversation that he can have to say, yo, does he have to deal with you because, or to be fair, like he he's homophobic or transphobic? But, or can he say, yo, that's not my preference? Like, how do you know what it was that was that his reasoning for not wanting to mess with you? So that's the thing. That's the reason that I started the conversation, right? I started the conversation because I'm one of those people that's empathetic to all sides of the situation. And that gets me in trouble a lot with my community because I believe that just like I'm asking for a blow phone and for people to listen, I believe that there are heterosexual arguments that need to be listened to on this, um, especially when it comes to the idea of like parents and coming out to your parents when you're gay or transgender or whatever the case may be. A lot of folks are like, no, fuck that. My parents need to accept me. But I'm, I think that the shoe needs to be put on both foot because that's a transition for everybody, right? Um, and my community doesn't get that all the time. And I made this like, thing because I was like, I do understand that as a trans woman, I'm affected because of my ego. All humans are affected because of their ego. Because like I said, you shoot your shot because you think you have one. So when somebody turns you down, not me. I just shoot it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> somebody gonna get shot today. Most hey, listen. <laughs> most sane people shoot their shot because they think they have a shot. And so when you get rejected, you get rejected and you like, damn, what the fuck? And so I think all people are just affected by that. But I think when you're turned down because you're trans, you inherently run to the negative because that's usually what the fuck it is. Like it's one of those things where. I know for me, my, my imagination runs rampant, right? So in my head, I, I'm rejected. I picture this nigga getting on the phone and being like, yo, this tranny just tried to talk to Like in my mind, that's what happened. But your my, antennas are up. Your antennas my antennas are up. Now, mind you, this man could have went and made him a hot pocket, laid down, and not thought about me for the rest of the night. But mm -hmm. in my mind, because I've had so many negative experiences, that's what the fuck just happened. And I think that if when we put it into the terms of what cis people are going through, I'm sure that there are cis black women on this feed right now who have been turned down by a black guy and then saw him with a white girl and said, oh, that's why he, that's why he turned me down, mm -hmm. right? And that's not true. He turned you down because your feet weren't done and he's a foot guy. Mm -hmm. But you don't know that because your ego is just like, nah, fuck that. I saw him with this white bitch and mm -hmm. that's why he turned me down. He only fuck with white bitches, fuck him, right? And... That's why I started to do this live because it was one of those things where I sit on the fence about it being transphobic because I know that a large part of the reason why most men, especially black men, say no to trans women is because of the stigma around trans women at large, especially okay. the black community. So pre-op, like you said, we mm -hmm. you said this pre-op and post-op. Me, right. pre-op, I don't want to be, I don't want to see no dick while I'm fucking. That's pre-op. Let me right. let me just say that. You said it's homophobia. I said that. I don't want to bend something over. Titties big. She beautiful. And it's a dick hanging down. I'm not interested in dick. Right? So now, boom. Mentally, me mentally, when you tell me you trans, right? Now, like you said, I just started having this conversation this year. So maybe I do got layers and layers and layers of homophobia. Right? That's, that's made up in my composition of what I look at as sexy or what I look at as as I'm attracted to, I'm, I'm going to say that's cool, fine. Because now, once you tell me you trans, I don't care if you pre-op, post-op, trans woman, I'm thinking you was a man. I'm already like, nah. It's just something in me that says that, and you're telling me that's homophobic. Why can't I just say, yo, that's because, just not what I'm into. I want a girl. Because, my thing girl. Is, because then our entire exchange feels bogus. Right? So my thing is, even, and it's not to say that I feel some type of way, some type of way, but even now, my exchanges with you outside of this conversation feel slightly bogus and forced because it's one of those things where it's like, um, for instance, not even, I'm not going to even bring you into because I don't want it to be personal because we could talk about that on a one-off, but my ex-boyfriend's brother, he was the sweetest thing to me. Never would have thought anything negative about him. He was always sweet, never misgendered me, never made a mistake, ever. One day, we were randomly having a conversation. And I asked him, so you don't respect me as a woman? You don't see me as a woman? And that nigga said no. Mind you, this is somebody who had never been rude to me, never misgendered me, never slipped up and called me a man, nothing like that. And he's seen me without wigs, without makeup, without hair, naked, all of that, and never made a mistake. But then for him to say... I don't really see you as a woman, don't really respect your womanhood because I know that you're trans. 
it makes me feel like, okay, so why are you fucking with me? That's that to me. Why does like, that make it a negative that he said that? Because it feels like some wolf in sheep's clothing ass shit. Because then I you feel don't like think I that's can't... your ego? Because why get why why do you have to be when we always talk about? I think we said this. We always talk about non gen genders are assigned and all of this other shit. Right. Why do you need to be a woman? Why can't you just be trans? Why can't I say that's who I see you as and it not be a negative, not have a negative conversa conversation, con thing, connotation? Why do I? Why can't you accept that that's just what I see and I accept you for that? Because now you're taking the negative from that. I'm not attributing to that. I could just say, yo, you're not a woman. I know a woman when I see a, a woman when she was born, she was a woman. I don't see you like that. I see you as trans. I see him as a, a guy. He's a, he's a man. There's no negative connotation to any of those statements. I mean, my delivery was off, but not necessarily trying to put negative connotation on that, but you took it like that. And then how is the average person supposed to know what to say? The verbiage is literally in the verbiage. It's a word. I still see you as human. I'm still hanging out with you every day. I still show you love. You're getting undressed, dressed around me all day. I've always shown you love. But the minute I said that one word, which isn't the slur, it isn't meant to, to bring you down or, 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 or hurt you, you felt like I don't fuck with you no more. Why is that? If, if I'm friends, picture this. You got a white friend. Yeah. And I'm sure you. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. Not good. You got a white friend. You okay. met this friend. You met this friend in college. Y'all banged heavy all college. He met the love of his life in college. The year after college, they get married. You get an invitation to the wedding. You show up to this wedding. Mind you, you done been on boat trips. Y'all done went out of the town, out of the country. You love his wife. Everything is good. All of this shit is going great. You done been with this nigga through thick and thin. He done gave you money. You done gave him money. Everything is great. You show up to this wedding. And his entire family is Trump supporting, clearly racist, over the top, mm -hmm. black hating, uncomfortable that you there, white folks. Mm -hmm. He's never exhibited any of those behaviors to you, but this is his family. He still fuck with them heavy every day. These are their beliefs. They're avid and open about that shit. They're not trying to hide it. And so as a black person, mm. you can't tell me that now your thought process about him ain't slightly, even if it's just the smallest notion that you're not slightly like. I can understand that point because I have a friend that I work with that his family is openly racist, openly racist. And he hates going over there, but that's his family. What I'm gonna do? If he's always shown me support, never disrespecting me, made sure to, when the, when the song come on, he stops when the N word comes up and he keeps rapping or whatever. But he's a he's a white person, like straight white. You will not see no hood in him. He ain't grow up around that, so he's actively trying to accept me, my culture, and my struggles. And he's like he's he's part of it, even in his whiteness, because he starts white. He's actively, but then when he goes around where he came from, those people haven't learned that. What is he supposed to do? When he's showing me that type of respect, what am I supposed to do? Still judge him for the for the Make America Great Again hats over there? I can't do that. But my thing is, you're not going to, like, there's still something in you. I, I can't say you, right? But I know me, and from what I saw in the comments, a vast majority of people was like, mm, because even if you, that's not you, and that's not who I know you to be, this is where you come from, and you haven't cut them off. There's no real disconnect from them. So you telling me, oh, I don't really fuck with them like that. I hate going over here, whatever the case may be. But it, my thing is, there are certain lines that I'm going to draw when I'm not this type of person. And while to some people that that narrative might be far-fetched, they might be two different completely things. To me, those are very similar situations. When I feel like, damn, Tahoe's my brother. He's here for me through everything. He respects me. He sees me. In, in, in the fullness of myself. He's never judged me. I've gotten naked around this man and it wasn't like a big, oh, 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 hope put your clothes. Like it wasn't one of those things. 
now I've formulated because that doesn't happen often. And I think that that's the thing too that that cis heterosexual cis men need to understand is that relationships between heterosexual cis black men and black trans women don't happen often. So when we do have those relationships with you guys, it's difficult. especially it's difficult. especially when they're it's platonic, mm -hmm. and you turn it's around difficult. after we feel like we've been affirmed by you and say I don't see you in this way that I felt like you've been affirming for me, that becomes a problem because then Let I'm like. Let me tell you. Let me say this. In our community, it is very difficult for men to step up and say, I'm in support of this. Right. Um, and it's like somebody asked me, I think I was on uh, Kiki from Cocktails. I don't know if you're familiar with her. I was on yeah. her, her, her live. I was just listening. And she asked me, um, "Do you, when you see a guy dating a younger woman, an older man, being a straight, trying to date a teenager. He's 37, and he's trying to date a teenager. Why y'all don't check that dude? And it's very often that a lot of dudes don't say nothing. You know, I don't know why we like that. It, it, that's a bigger question that I need to have. Maybe I'll go on Guys Next Door or something like that, and let's have that type of conversation, because I don't know why straight men don't stand up when we see that type of shit and we don't agree with it. Like we will talk about it under our breath. Like, yo, you see what he's doing? Yo, she's like 17, but we don't really press him or ostracize him. I'm like, yo, you one of those type of niggas. Like we don't do that. And it's the same thing as stepping up for a trans woman. Like we'll be like, I don't want to step out. Like me and her could be cool behind closed doors, but I ain't going to, you know what I mean? Walk down the block with her. Cause I don't want to, I ain't trying to make that type of statement. I don't know why we do that. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a good question. I got to ask myself that and come back and revisit it because I, I don't know. That's something I can't say. I know why. You know what I mean? I, I think that being able to, one, say that and hold yourself accountable to that is like commend that shit. And I know you're not doing it for that, but like you don't understand how, for some people on here watching to a lot of these black friends, they never heard a black man, a cis black man talk like this. And so you're affirming a lot of people and you don't even know it. But it's one of those things where I think we have to have a larger conversation about why men are allowing the opinions of other men or the opinions of other people to, like, and I feel like it's a specific conversation about Black men allowing the opinions of other people to dictate how they move about the world. Because what I see, and, and, and the difference in when I've dated white men, white men are so free about their shit not just because they're white men and they, they indulged in, in white privilege right because that's the thing that's a whole nother conversation but white men are so free about what the fuck they like because white men have been taught their entire life that like as long as you taking care of yourself a bitch can't like nobody can take nothing away from you if as long as you get this this that and the third and you're doing these things for yourself Nobody can take anything away from you. And I feel like Black men have not been taught that. Black men have always been taught that at any moment, this could be snatched from you. So you it always can have be, to constantly be fighting. We're and always so, scared of that. We're always, always scared to be people. ostracized by our community. You know what I mean? And that's Black women, too. And that's unfair. We want to be cool to Black women, too. Yes. Let's not just say it's about being with our friends. Because like, really in any instance, once they cut you off, we, what you going to do? Like, White, white men have that comfortability. They're not acting because that's their life. That's their existence. No matter what, they don't have to have nothing. They're still white. Right. And they can rebuild and it'll be all right. Black men, we work so hard to find a comfort zone. We work hard to find a comfort zone and we be scared to lose it because our community is sensitive. Razor edge sharp cut you immediately off the minute you do one thing wrong. The minute you do one thing, not even wrong, one thing they don't agree with, one thing they confused by, they'll cut you right off. And you got to hold that forever. You could move to Ohio from New York. Let word get down to Ohio. You have to move again. Because that shit will follow you, follow you, follow you. Especially now social media, you know what I mean, motherfuckers? Some shit happened in 12th grade. That's what they bring up. And now that's you. You understand what I'm saying? And we're not talking about crimes. We're not talking about rape. We ain't talking about some shit like that. We talking about, look, he was sleeping on a twin bed and he ain't had no headboard. Look, that's you forever. From now on, you at headboard. You understand what I'm saying? So we be scared to do things. And I'm not making excuses. I'm kind of, while you was talking, I'm just thinking like, damn, and you, you said it yourself. We do be scared to step out on that ledge. 
because because the, the motherfucking black people in our community will push you right off of it. But why do we have to? Uh, and and I feel like why do why do we have to internalize that though, right? Because it's one of those it's one of those things where you don't. I, I think, and I think that as a as a black trans woman who's walked in this shit and has had to be strong to live in the truth and the life that makes me yes, I get it. I get it. Right? I, like, I feel like it's easy for me to say that because I'm like, bitch, I fight for this shit every day. Why the fuck you can't fight for it, you know? But it's one of those things where I feel like black men got to take back what the fuck masculinity means to them. And I feel like black men are allowing everybody to dictate what black masculinity looks like for them except black men. Y'all allow black women to tell y'all what y'all supposed to look like. Y'all allow white men to tell y'all what y'all supposed to look like. Y'all allow social media to tell y'all what y'all supposed to look like. Rappers who don't know what their masculinity is supposed to look like to look like. And... But let's talk about how y'all mm -hmm. are braver. You know how brave you are? Gay people, trans people, lesbians, when y'all finally said, you know what, I'm going to be me. I don't care what nobody else thinks. Y'all transcended something that black men, the average heterosexual black man, doesn't do or doesn't have to. But you can't. That isn't forced to. But we aren't forced to do but that to be ourselves. Nobody is forced to. People aren't forced to come out. I wasn't forced to be, I wasn't forced no, to. No, that's, that's why I said that makes you brave to But do that's that. the thing. But it's, it's not that people are brave. People just get sick and tired of not living lives that make them happy. And the thing about it is I hear black men's pain. I hear black men sitting back talking about how they wish it were like this and how they wish they could do this and how they wish that black women wouldn't judge them for this and how they wish society. But my thing is y'all aren't doing it and y'all acting like y'all don't have the power. There's nothing more special about a Hope Giselle coming out and saying, this is who the fuck I am and this is who you're going to recognize me as than there is as a Tahoe saying, this is what the fuck I'm going to do. This is who I'm going to be friends with and y'all going to either get with it or get lost. There's nothing hard about that. The hard part about it is stepping into that shit that you say you about. The hard part about it is being that real man that you claim that you are. The hard part about it is saying fuck these people that don't understand who you are because you still want to be connected to them for whatever bullshit ass reason that you've allowed yourself to believe that they mean so much and their opinion is so valid in your life. These people are people who nine times out of ten sleeping on a fucking floorboard. These people are people who nine times out of ten are running in and out of CVS to sell milk for their babies, can't support them themselves let alone you their family and they're judging you and you're allowing their opinion to hold weight in your life and it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. lgbt people are not these superhero people that run around with this special id this ideology that we just like oh shit like all of a sudden we're ordained with this power to be brave we decide to say fuck that because i'm not gonna let somebody else dictate the next 20 years of my happiness the reason that I stepped into my truth, into my power, my homegirl Jasmine was cutting out a sewing for my head because my mama told me if she made it to Alabama and I still had a weave in my head, she was going to fight me like I was a stranger. And as Jasmine was cutting that weave out of my head, she said to me, well, damn, what you going to do, Hope? You going to wait for your mama to die for you to be happy? And it was at that fucking moment I told her to put those scissors down and grab that needle and thread again because I couldn't. My mama's still alive. And so had I let my mom make me come out of that moment, I would still be that little boy unhappy out this bitch. I would be a completely different person. And y'all have to realize, y'all have that, y'all have that same power. You have the same power to tell somebody where do you want us to, to put go? the scissors down. Where do you want us to go when this is what is, it's like what you want to be is yourself. This is kind of who we think we are. We don't know no different. We like I said, that was the culture. That was everything that was taught us for so long. You the culture in two thousand two was tall tees and oversized pants. And the most of these people are not was on tall the internet. Oversized pants, Tahoe. Most Lil Wayne, told, Lil Wayne told y'all to wear skinny jeans and y'all wore skinny jeans. The new uh, boys Kanye. told y'all to wear skater shoes and y'all wore skater shoes. Um, that's <laughs> the future, future told y'all to no. drink cough syrup and y'all drank cough syrup. So the, 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 norm, the norm can be changed. The it problem is y'all wait for niggas with power. Y'all wait for niggas with notoriety to tell y'all how to be who to be. It's gonna, like, and it's sad, but it's going to take some famous ass nigga who y'all respect to come out and say, man, fuck y'all with this gay shit. Get gay people cool. And then niggas going to be like, okay, cool. Because when I was growing up in 2001, skinny jeans was gay as fuck. 
And then the second that Lil Wayne, somebody y'all respected, says, fuck y'all niggas, I'm gonna wear what the fuck I wanna wear, then skinny jeans was cool. You couldn't catch a nigga in them before Lil Wayne put them on. You couldn't catch a nigga in those big ass boat DC shoes until those new boys put it on when they was popping. You couldn't catch a nigga in all these labels and these tight ass shirts with Fendi and shit and all this flashy stuff until somebody famous told y'all, this is masculinity now, go with it. And the, and little do y'all know, it's a gay man behind them telling them. But don't this all song. fashion come from somewhere? It comes like, from it's somewhere. It's easy to break it down so and, and attribute it to one thing, but all fashion comes from other people that's fly that you say, oh shit, I want to be like that. Black people do it like that. But we that's look at the Japanese people. We're like, oh shit, look at that Japanese shit. And next thing you know, it's in our culture or the stores. But what I'm saying, that's, but what I'm I mean, saying, I get what you're saying. Right. You, you have a point, but it still comes from other places. Like, it now, but you're, you're right. Our leaders, the people who we look up to, say this is cool now, and we follow it. So be one. You're absolutely right. So be one. I, that's I'm that's what that's all I'm saying. And I know that it, I know it's easier said than done, Tahoe. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, you are in, in your own right. You are one of those niggas with influence. Influence. Because I'm sure it's a lot of people. You might not have said anything to me, and if and if it wasn't, then I'm I'm very grateful, and I I'm 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 really I'm I'm impressed with black men. But I'm sure that there's a lot of people, whether you know about it, whether they brought it to your attention or not, that was like jonesing jonesing on you for not jonesing on me on that episode. They, nah, they everybody said like, that they, everybody said that they loved it, and, and some people was like, I don't agree. And then we had our private conversations. They was like, Yeah, I get it, but you just kind of got to get it to people. You got to feed it to people in the way that they can um, understand it. Everybody not going to understand everything first time. So you got to read, read, you know, calibrate it. But nah, you ain't getting no, you ain't getting no hate. I'm talking about hundreds of messages. You ain't getting no hate. So I think that starting with, if, if you really want to be that change, if you want to start seeing shit differently, First and foremost, I don't believe that nothing happens overnight. Like you said, there's some stuff that you got to talk to yourself about, go through your process and figure out on your own. But we ain't no superheroes over here. Queer folks, LGBT people, we not superheroes. All we did was say, I'm sick and tired of this shit. Put the scissors down. I'm going to be who the fuck I want to be. So when when is your put the scissors down moment? Because I already had mine. And I, mean, I think coming on the show with you and Weezy was, was part of it, you know? I'm I'm from... I'm from the real part of, of Brooklyn, and I don't care about none of that no more. I don't, and as a matter of fact, I'm not violating nothing. I feel like I have to open my mind to just being human, accepting human things, you know what I mean? Like, you deserve that respect, so I don't have no problem doing that, you know? That's just, that's just where I'm at with it right now, all around. Especially, I'm a father now. I look at things a whole lot different. I just can't be a piece of shit like that no more. Like, that's just not my style, but... Look, enough respect to you. You're going to be in Atlanta, right? Yeah. You're coming down.